Hello, my name is Neil Boudville and I'm Professor of Medicine at the University of WA and Head of the Division of Internal Medicine. I've been coordinating the Internal Medicine Rotation at the WA Medical School for the last 15 years and I thought I would produce a series of teaching resources focused around the OSCEs, which is one of our school's major assessments at the end of third year and at the end of fourth year. Since we moved to the MD program at around 2017, there have been around 30 students failing the final year OSCE every year, and I want to make this number zero. I also want all students to have the best chance possible to achieving the highest score they can. So this is the first episode where I will go over the template that we use when we create an OSCE station. In doing so, you will hopefully get an understanding of how we assess the student and then hopefully develop some strategies to tackling the OSCEs. What you can see here is the template that members of the OSCE writing committee uses when we create an OSCE station. The OSCE writer spends a lot of time creating the station, including how it is set up. And this would include listing the equipment that is needed in the rooms, any results that need to be present in the rooms, and even to the detail of where everyone is seated. Over in this part of the template, you can see that there are specific instructions to the student, which you'll be familiar with, which are the trigger and the tasks. And then in this section here, we provide quite detailed instructions to our actors who may be playing a patient or a nurse in the station. What you do need to remember is that we can't, cannot give these actors who are mostly well and not professional actors, we cannot give them all of the information possible to answer every potential question that a student can come up with. So we ask the students to think about the role that they are playing and answer within the context if an answer is not directly given to them. If the actor does ask you, the student, a question, then it will be have been carefully scripted within the, their instructions. We also provide the examiner with very specific instructions relevant to their this particular OSCE station. In one of my future episodes, I'll go over an old actual OSCE station and you can get an idea of how we individualize these forms. Once again, if the examiner asks you any questions, they'll be specifically scripted within the instructions that they are given. Here is the actual marking sheet template that we use. This is where your name and student number will be entered and we will check it off after you walk through the door to make sure we are allocating the marks to the correct student. The marking sheet can be divided into three parts, the checklist score, the empathy score and the global score. The empathy score is only included if there is an actor within the station, otherwise there will only be the other two parts. The empathy score is where the actor gets to score your performance and is worth 10% of the marks for the station. The global score is the assessor's gut feeling as to how good or bad the student is and is worth 30% of the station. Therefore, the remaining 60% of the marks are accounted for by the checklist score. The two ways you can fail at Onoski station is by scoring less than 50% for the station or getting a borderline or below score on the global score. The most common reason why students fail the OSCE station is due to the global score. Over the course of this series of OSCE teaching resources, we will hopefully develop some strategies to maximize your global score. So let's go back to the checklist score, which is usually, as you remember, worth 60% of the marks for this station. This is usually divided into three or four sections. Within each section, the assessor will be given a list of expectations grouped together, typically around the triggers. So if there are three triggers, then there are usually three sections. And if there are four triggers, there are usually four sections. This is important to remember as the student, because it means that you need to allocate the right amount of time for each trigger. Doing one trigger really well, but missing out one or two could still lead to you failing. The assessor will look at how you perform for each section and mark in this gray area what level you achieved. There will be specific guidance provided to the assessor 
as to what meets expectations is compared to below and above expectations. And that is entered in this part of the form. If we go to Appendix A, you can see some generic instructions. For example, if the skills being, being assessed in the station were on history taking, you can see that it meets expectations is defined as a systematic approach which elicits the majority of essential information in a manner to give an accurate picture of the illness, and so on. Below expectations would be a disorganized, lacks coherence, some essential items of the history are missing, does not quanti quantify or qualify the symptoms well to give an accurate picture, and so on. The OSCE writer would individualize this for the station that they're creating. For example, if it was a cardiovascular history, it might be uh, written in the meets expectation part that we expect the student to ask about chest pain, radiation of the pain, associated symptoms such as nausea, shortness of breath, swelling of his ankles, discuss cardiovascular risk factors, and so on. These are the guidelines for the global score. And I might focus you on to the definition of a borderline score. This is defined as mostly competent in completing many tasks, but with some significant omissions or weakness shown in completing a few tasks. As a committee, we review and vet each other's stations. And so all stations get scrutinized very carefully before the actual OSCE is run. We also use this skills grid to ensure that we are covering adequately all of the skills or competencies that we think are important with the right amount of repetition. Don't worry, this is an old skills grid and we actually uh, are currently having 12 OSCE stations in final year, at least for 2021. So this is the end of episode one and really just starts to set the scene for what OSCEs are all about. More episodes will be published in time, with some of them planned to be podcasts in the MedTalk site. In case you haven't heard about MedTalk, I would recommend you go visit it, as there's already lots of useful podcasts available. Please contact me if you have any comments about this episode or want to make suggestions about future ones. Have a good day.